Greetings, people of the internet, and welcome to this week's IPFS Documentation and User Experience Task Force meeting. Today is Monday, the 16th of September, 2019, and I am your unofficial official host being attacked by flies because I'm working outside, Jessica. You can follow along in the notes that are available every week. Uh, links to all of the above are available in the docs repo, github.com slash IPFS slash docs. So we will just start. I think at this point we don't have anything outstanding as far as I am aware other than the usual recurring items. Um, is there anything that I have missed from all y'all though that is not in the recurring items? All right, excellent. Um, I shall then delete that from the agenda. Uh, the content audit um, OKR, we're actually going to call this OKR done. Um, last week, Eric and I wrapped up consolidating uh, the content inventory last week, captured all of that in GitHub issues, which is great. Um, so the th this exercise is more or less done. That said, um, we will dig deeper into that content-wise in Q4, uh, pending the onboarding of our new documentation specialist. Um, Ditto with the Docs Platform Features Inventory, the second item on the agenda. That is finished. Um, there's a link to the Features Inventory in the, um, in the agenda. The one note on that is that we want to discuss um, how we're prioritizing IPFS hosting and fetching in more detail. There is an issue in the GitHub board open for that um, that we just need to, we need to devote a more detailed discussion to the best way to solve that. Um, Docs platform tech stack and framework OKR. Chris is on holiday until I think the 25th, I believe. Um, he did, however, stand up a DocuSaurus proof of concept before he left. He'll do the same for ViewPress when he returns. Uh, we all got to play around with that, so that was a very interesting, interesting exercise, and I'm looking forward to seeing um, his his thoughts on head-to-head -head comparison of DocuSaurus versus ViewPress. Um, moving along to the OKR to hire our new documentation specialist. We're getting close. Um, we are doing some internal discussions this week about the available strong candidates vis-a-vis -vis the IPFS role that we've got and then also the sort of analogous Filecoin role. So watch this space. Um, again, want to be conscious that we're on a public call and want to respect our candidates' privacy. So if you have any, um, if you want to catch up with me individually, please feel free. I'd be happy to talk through any of that because um, things are looking very optimistic. Uh, moving on to the goal-based persona. Um, we had three really, Eric and I had three really useful conversations with engaged partners um, this week, Audius, Query, and um, Textile. Um, really interesting conversations. Sounds like we're, for the most part, going in the right direction with the personas, um, but there were some very interesting caveats and additional thoughts on that. Um, my job this week is to consolidate those, amend the persona accordingly, add some notes to like best practices for use of the persona, and then ship it, which in this case means making it publicly available at the top of our repo and in a few other places. Um, the OKR item for tactical hotfixes, we're at approximately 20 hotfixes for the quarter so far, and that's just stuff that we've noted um, with the OKR hotfix label um, in the docs repo. So, you know, if you want to track and see exactly what got done, just do a search by label for um, OKR hotfixes. You know, we've got, I think, something like, Eric, we've got something like another 30 hotfixes queued up. So, I mean, we have, a, we have an endless pool of hotfixes that we can choose from. So. That's just the reminder that, you know, if you find yourself with a little bit of free time and want some bite-sized projects to nibble on, um, those exist, which is excellent. Um, the plan for that, because the hotfixes, you know, obviously are going to be an ongoing, an ongoing thing um, with how we're reconciling Q3 and Q4 OKRs. Um, once we transition into Q4, I'll go ahead and relabel all of those existing issues against a Q4 hotfix ethic so that we can track those better. Molly. It might be useful. Something that some other areas have done is to have a priority label just for, especially when there's kind of a number of incoming tasks and you're like, I don't know which one of these 12 things to pick up. Yep. Uh, it can be useful. So I don't know if that's something we want to do like at the beginning of Q4, given we have a backlog queued up. I know that as they've been coming in, maybe it was hard to prioritize, but um, now that there are a set, 
we can make yeah. sure we focus on the most important first. Yeah, there's, I mean, there is, there is some sort of ad hoc prioritization being done on these. Um, just because we've been a small team with that at this point, we've been able to, we've been able to sort of discuss that between us, you know, just the idea of things that are easy versus things that are important. Uh, that said, ones that are particularly ripe for community contribution have also been noted as such as help wanted. Um, those are generally some of the more bite size or more entry point sort of issues. Um, but we, we can definitely look into whether it's gonna be advantageous to prioritize those, I mean, we've had a pretty, a pretty good internal sense at this point. Although that said, once, once we bring on our new docs person, we're probably going to want their input in that as well. So, Eric, did you have, were you, you going to say something? No. Okay. <laughs> um, so um, the front page quiz, um, OKR, you know, we're continuing to collect metrics. We'll take further steps when Chris is back from holiday. We did also get, um, I didn't note this in the agenda, but I will, but we did also get our first, um, in our, our first community note in the forums on the forum issue that we've sent people through to to introduce themselves and their motives for using IPFS. So, so that was cool. Um, I have it on my things to do to, to write back to at least say hello and, and thank you to that person today but it's nice to know that that, that funnel is is being utilized and um you know we have been keeping an eye on the metrics but we're just trying to accumulate to get um to get enough numbers in there to figure out what our next steps are uh proto school stuff terry and jill do you want to talk through things sure so uh one of the biggest things we're still working on for proto school is reviewing camp content to see what we can adjust into pro school format. So as kind of related uh, to that camp content review, I drafted a blog post for the course video release that will hopefully happen later this week. So there's a link to a PR for that for anyone who'd like to prove. Um, and then I posted links here to first drafts of Q3 OKR scoring and Q for OKR draft, both of which are still kind of works in progress. I think in the scoring, I've put some kind of question marks on the ones that there's like some chance we'll push a little further than where we are before the end of this quarter. But um, the biggest thing we'll do on that front in the time that we have left for me will be the camp content. And for Jill, after, you know, more onboarding stuff would be trying to start that tutorial on the non MFS files command. So those are going to be the highlights if we can get to any more of it, but I'm only here next week and then I'm out for offline camp. And then one question that maybe is for Molly. I remember hearing on a call recently that the deadline for the scoring is the end of this week, I think, but I wasn't positive on the deadline for the Q4 drafts. Is that set? Yeah, so um, very good question. It would, your, your point on this is literally reminding me that I was supposed to create the GitHub issue where it collects all of our stuff and we can post our updates as well. Um, I think the, the aim for scoring, we should try and get that done like last, last time to get that done would be around the 20th, so the end of this week, and then aim for the 27th for having drafts of all of our um, Q4 grades, um, but there's going to be um, also kind of like meta overarching doc trying to prioritize across groups as well um, that we should have done by Friday of this week um, to, to share out with everyone as well so that people can use that to help with the cross coordination side, though I think every group kind of has a decent idea of um, the, main, the main priorities within. Um, this might just um, just help be kind of a top level view into how things interconnect with each other. Cool. So, yeah. Thanks. This Friday, grading. Next Friday, new OKRs. And um, bringing that to our team, you know, we have our internal OKRs. Um, you know, we had our, our discussion amongst the smaller team last week. Um, just keeping that in mind, I know that we all wanted to give another sort of small heap of thought to what was in our OKR document. Um, I would ask that um, you know, we all look over the scoring and um, next 
quarters OKRs um, by Thursday, and we can have a quick discussion about that on Thursday. Um, I will link to that in the agenda um, to the draft OKRs. Um, and then um, I did just add at the top of the agenda uh, notes on folks' absences because I'm going to be away. Um, hopefully as much as I, I can be for the first week of October um, for a family visit, I will try to attend the meetings for which I am important, important. Um, Terry, do you mind noting your uh, dates of absence in that as well? Okay, awesome, awesome. Um, we seem to be highly efficient today. It is only 13 minutes past the hour. Um, does anyone else have anything that we want to discuss? Are there any of the items we blazed through that need further discussion? We could use this time together to discuss them. We went through, um, we had a lot of discussion as the core team um, last week um, when Eric and I were co-working and I think we actually knocked a whole lot of um, active discussion out during that time, which may explain why we're being so incredibly efficient today. Um, we had some very, very good discussion around OKR and features prioritization that um, actually took a very long, <laughs> a very long time. So thank you to everybody for spending the time on that. Um, but unless anything substantial has changed, I think we're fairly caught up other than just the request for all of us individually to give some thought to the OKR so we can pin those down on Thursday. Hello, David, I think. Yeah, I'm not an imposter. <laughs> I just like that I'll you to listen in. Uh, you didn't want to interrupt or anything. I should You're start right. setting my, my title to David Diash and <laughs> my video. And then there can be two of us on one call. Um, would people be interested in looking at the first draft of the Proto School OKRs? So they extend kind of beyond docs. So I don't know if you want to bother with that in this call or not. Yeah. Since we're all in the we're all in the room and we've got the time, we may as well. Do you want to share your screen? Sure. I define docs as education, so I think they fall under that rubric. So, and these are. These are kind of rough, but I think most of you have seen that we have sort of four overarching go goals that we kind of stick with here and then come up with the categories underneath. So the first one is the content that's available on the site. So the most important thing, which will be a carryover from Q3, is figuring out where we can fit IPFS camp content, like the plan for that, um, and then actually applying that. So we would be creating new, either brand new tutorials or adjusting current tutorials with more interesting um, diagrams, illustrations, descriptions, et cetera, based on the camp content. And then we have this outstanding one here, which presuming we don't finish it quite this quarter, um, adding the tutorial on the non-MFS methods for files. And then we have an outstanding one to split. There's a non-coding um, one that we have right now is kind of confusingly mixing a couple of topics in a way that's not clear what the point is of mixing them, so separating that one out. So those are the key things that we envision for the content, and obviously this will take sh its shape from that exploration of camp content. Um, and then the next section is kind of learner experience, user experience. So this is a lot of the like how stuff works under the hood or what, they, what the user sees. So I need to finish up the documentation for uh, like designing effective tutorials. We already have a lot of very detailed content on building them in view, but not on what makes for a good tutorial. So that's super top priority because it's gonna allow for more contributions from the community. We do have at least one person who has expressed an interest in building content, which is awesome. Um, we wanna like put a little pause on and review other online coding tutorial platforms just in case there's something out there that would be a good fit for us so that if we want to do something else instead of continuing to build out our own that we know sooner and move over sooner. Um, one thing that comes out of camp content is that there's the, that cool CID inspector 
available now that was demonstrated in Alan's course that could be neat if the result of your tutorial is a CID that you could push a button and see it in the CID inspector to see like what kind of hash it is and those kinds of things. That would be a fun just little UX tweak that would add another tool. Um, this one I think I'm actually going to cut because I don't think we have the technical knowledge to do it and it would require leaning a lot more heavily on the lib P2P team. Um, but that would, that's something that would allow us to do the kind of validation we do under the hood with IPFS for lib P2P so that you could produce more content there, but I don't think we're quite, I don't think our team is in a place where we have the right skill sets to do that. Um, and these are two suggestions that came from, um, Andrew that are both great and I think won't be too hard to implement. So now that we can tell that you've completed every single lesson in a tutorial, we could set something up so that when you have finished a whole tutorial, you can either um, save your, save the, com the completed code because the last lesson in the tutorial is basically all of the lessons adding up to it. You, we could save as a gist the code from the, the successful code from the last one. And then we could also do something that's like starting a tweet to promote the fact that you just completed the tutorial. So just a couple of things that would be a little more like publicity or integration with different things, not incredibly important, but nice tweaks to have. Yeah, go ahead, Molly. Saving code as a gist is genius. As someone who has literally used protocol tutorials is like, how do I do that command again? Like, I'm not actually using it for documentation because I want to understand it, but then I do want to like reuse that going forward. Um, letting people kind of like hold on to that and save it somewhere. That's genius. I like it. Cool. Um, so that's, that's the stuff on the sort of user experience kind of front, um, which is, uh, uh, none of it is like ginormously time consuming in theory, but lots of little cool things to pick off. And then that's a place where we end up getting a lot of feedback throughout both content and the UX are things where we end up getting a lot of feedback as we go along that we need to respond to. Um, the chapter section, I've, you'll see Molly that a lot of this is based on the issue that you opened that I responded to. So we have this struggle because there's not enough content for our chapter leaders to do what we want them to, which is why I've been intentionally prioritizing building content over doing more on the chapter front. Um, or pulling in more chapter leaders, but something we do want to do is make sure that um, we're documenting kind of best practices for facilitating protoschool tutorials. So there's a specific request, which is to create documentation that helps you like lead a tutorial live, whether or not you're a chapter leader. And this came from Molly thinking about folks who might be at a conference, a third party event, don't run a chapter, but want it to feel manageable to lead one of these in person. Um, and then as always, we're trying to build the number of chapters that we have around the world, but there are some other things here in terms of creating kind of sharing slide deck templates, some of them like an intro to IPFS, intro to this or that, the other. Um, maybe making kind of facilitation guides for the specific tutorials that exist that are a little bit of extra material around them. And then um, I'm still working on creating some more specific guidance to avoid some common misperceptions about what it means to lead a chapter. I think realistically, I need to lead, lean on chapter leaders to get some of this out the door. So Dan and Kevin are going to volunteer to do some of this, but the schedule will be dependent on when they have the time available. So I hope that some of these things we can knock out in Q4, but I can't guarantee quite when yet, and we're waiting for them to comment on that issue as well. So. That's the chapter leadership stuff that we have planned, um, which this, these last two sections, the top two sections involve uh, Jill and I both and the bottom sections are kind of me driving them. And then the bottom one is just some stuff, some ongoing stuff to think about what's the future of the project, what kind of um, su yeah, capacity support do we need, um, that kind of stuff, whether we want to start a blog. Yes, Jessica? These are awesome. Do you mind posting a link to uh, this issue or this PR in the uh, HackMD where we have been putting together our draft Q4 OKRs for docs just for cross-linking so people can find this? Yes, I thought I had, but maybe I haven't, so I can do that. Yeah. Thank you so much. Any other questions, suggestions, thoughts on this? Yeah, Molly? I'm going to 
one of the places where, where that, that is, list of issues came from was going to Web3 and talking to a number of, um, of chapter organizers and sitting in on um, like watching people give proto school tutorials, um, which was super awesome. And, and like being able to synthesize that great feedback, I did not come up with it. I, um, I copied it down from what other folks told me and um, thought they were really good recommendations. And so definitely, um, I'm planning to go to DevCon as part of meeting with other folks in the IPFS ecosystem in a month. And so I expect if there are more things that we specifically want to get people's feedback on, we're going to have kind of a captive group together. We are planning to do some more proto school tutorials in a couple of different meetups. Um, and it would be awesome if there was something that we could like, it's, that's like the very beginning of October, so it doesn't make any sense to like assume that we're going to have something done from an OKR perspective. Um, but if there's anything that we want to grab people's feedback on, or we want to get the local chapter organizers together to like help bang some of these out, um, that might be a really good opportunity just because people are going to be like mindset on in terms of, hey, I literally just tried leading a proto school chapter. Here are all the things that it would help me try and do this better. Or, you know, I sat here and I read this entire thing that everyone was reading at the same time. I wish there was something I could read that is not just reading the thing that everyone's looking at or something like that, um, that would kind of help give you a feedback loop um, from those people that are gonna be on site. Jessica? Um, and ditto with, um, and, and you may have already talked to Dan Shields about this, but it sounds like we're still gonna be able to do the in-person meetup in um, Boulder on the 15th, 16th of um, October, whatever that Wednesday is. Um, and so, so it's gonna be under the auspices of an IPFS meetup and Dan is going to lead a, a pretty school tutorial for the evening discussion. Um, in some ways, this is sort of intended as a scaffolding to do some UX discussion during the day. Uh, the plan is to let people hang out at this super awesome co-working space in Boulder for the day in exchange for um, also attending in the evening, uh, which gives me a, the chance to do some UX work. Um, that said, um, let me know as the day gets closer what you want me to specifically like take notes on because I'm not going to be leading the evening meetup. Uh, that's going to be Dan. And um, so I can I can definitely be the person in the corner who's just sort of hanging out watching how this goes down and taking some notes. So just let that rattle around in your mind, assuming it's not it's not 100% definite that this is even going to happen yet, but it's sounding pretty good. Cool. Thank you. Awesome. So I realized I'm not muted. This is this little area that you can do calls in is outside the bathroom. So they, it, the hand dryers are still. Oh. And you probably hear, you probably hear my, my boyfriend who has a musical instrument lesson um, in the background. So if you hear someone practicing an instrument, um, sorry about that. Um, all right. I think we've actually been horrendously efficient. Probably everybody had a very, very good weekend. Uh, we have another meeting in five minutes, so let's all disband and get ready for our next meeting in five minutes. Um, I shall see all y'all on the internet. You know where to find us. Um, those of you in the outside world who may be watching, please um, stay, stay in touch with us. You know, you know where to find us and you know how to contact us and we look forward to participating with you as we make the docs an amazing and wonderful thing. Thanks all, see you next time.